Hey, what is it guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. Today we add a little bit in our war table menu over here. As you can tell, we have the current starting wave, which is right now on uh, zero, and that's fine. And whenever you do reset, if you reset your wave progress, because now we do have a reset wave, um, you get plus one magic brick every 10 wave. So we start implementing our secondary uh, currency in there a little bit. This is not the pay to win currency, but uh, it's going to be something that we really need for a later upgrade and end game. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so yesterday we've made an episode where we implemented a new mechanic, a really cool mechanic where we just keep track of the progress we're currently in right now uh, in terms of wave. Today we're going to make a way so we can break this. Right now we're starting at wave 30. Let's say we don't really want that. Let's say we want to start at wave 1 again, um, or wave 0 rather, then what we're going to do is create a button that does that. So um, I am going to head over to the prefab, not prefab, sorry, to the uh, hub scene. And inside of the hub scene, we have the UI root and then finally the wire table. Now on the wire table, I'll just put the UI visible. And here is where I'm going to be, um, be putting my button. So we have the difficulty container, which contains all of these guys. But we are also going to have a, um, a button just above them or below, it's up to you really. I'll be putting it below and I'll just make some space for that, so let's say something like that. And then the button's gonna be at the very bottom here. So what I'll do is I'll right click, create a new panel, and this panel is going to be anchored the bottom center. Or you know what? Let's make it stretch on this axis as well. And um, it's gonna be, I don't know what's the margin for this. Let me just quickly check the margin for this has to be something like 30 so 30 on both right and left axis and then in terms of height let's go over for um, something like 75 and we can increment the position of y just like this so you have some something like that we can then go ahead and just change that for our usual backgrounds so that would work that would work did pretty much all work Let's use this one. Right, so this is going to be a button as well at the same time. So I'll just say reset button is the name of this. We're going to add a button component to it. And on the button component, we'll swatch that. We'll um, swap the transition to sprite swap. And also make sure that the highlighted graphic is the one we have not been using. So I think it's this one. I actually got this um, in the wrong order. So what I'll do is I'll go back and now this button is going to be UI Atlas 1. When you mouse over it, or when you click on it, it's going to be UI Atlas 5. Like our usual button. Okay, so in the middle of that, there is going to be a text, not a particle system, a text, so UI text, and this is going to be the reset wave progress. Um, we should also tell the player which wave he's on right now. Starting, or you know what, well I should just create an ob another object for that, so... Um, I'll put it above here. So reset wave progress, that would work. And just below it, I'd like to reward the player with something. So say he made it to wave 20, I'd like to give him um, two magic bricks. If he made it to wave 10, give him one. If he made it to, t he, um, to wave 100, give him 10. So something of the sort, so he can just reset the progress and actually get something out of it. That would be fairly cool. Plus we get to implement a little bit of our uh, secondary currency in there as well. So I'll just start by stretching this up, centering the text, changing the font, and um, I'll squeeze this down to say 50, and we'll just put the other text I was mentioning just above it. So this is going to be stretch, margin of 30 as well, that's fine, um, height is also fine I believe, and current wave, current starting wave is going to equal a number that we'll set via code. So we'll end up with something like that. Um, this could be a little bit smaller, so say 20 or even 18. So it's barely visible but it's there to tell you, okay, so you're starting on that wave. And then there's the reset wave progress. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and just start linking these. Um, the first thing we'll do is actually go inside of the hub manager and we'll create a function that can receive this button input. 
So I'll go at the very end here. Public void on reset wave button. And we'll start with something like um, the tower dot instance starting level. Whoops. And we'll put that on zero, of course. Now we're going to make sure that this saves. So we'll do instance. Um, we have a save. So we're going to save to cloud. And this is, of course, going to take care of um, doing the rest. So, all right, we've got this working. Now again in the hub manager we're gonna be we're gonna be having two new fields. So two new public text field. First one being the current no actually we'll we'll call it the starting wave. Starting wave text. And the second one is going to be the reset wave text. If I can type, that would be great. Alright. So we go back in the game, we wait until this compiles, this has compiled, we choose the hub manager, and now we gotta find our um, two text objects, which are right about um, here under the word table. So click on the hub manager, and then we're going to drag and drop the starting wave, and also the um, text inside of that button here, reset wave progress. Now on the reset progress, button I will go down here in the on click event we're gonna be putting the hub manager and then find on reset wave button which is a function we just made okay so technically everything should be working right now except of course the display of it and we're not really updating the text so say we go here we're supposed to start on wave 10 press on easy we're starting on wave 30 okay so like I said the display doesn't know the display doesn't work just yet but uh, let's click on that we reset the wave progress, we go under easy, and we're back on wave zero. And then if we stop the game, let's just check out if the um, the saving function did work. We go back, press on easy, we're back on zero as well, so it did save. So everything is pretty cool, now we have these, uh, we have reference to these, and we'll just create another function again, maybe not here, um, somewhere. pretty much anywhere you want. We'll do public void update wave text and then in, in this place we'll be um, pretty much just updating the wave text. So what do we do here? We do the starting wave text is equal to and then I'll just grab what I wrote a moment earlier so current starting wave. I'll just grab this oh not this the current starting wave And we'll do a plus the tower dot instance starting level to string of course. And now finally the other the other text, the reset wave text is going to be um, something like reset your progress and then we're gonna have to find a way to um, we're gonna have to find a way to actually just uh, implement like say the reward you get out of that. So if we just head over to our function, reset wave progress, and then um, we're gonna be putting a reward right after that. But let's find out what kind of reward we give first. So I said something like uh, magic brick. Every 10, you're gonna get a new magic brick. So every 10 wave, you're gonna get one more. So we can use the starting level for that. I'll just take this, and I'll say int uh, wave is equal to starting level. I can now replace that here. And then we'll do divided by 10, and then we'll get the remain of that. So um, int magic brick reward is equal to wave divided by 10. And this way, if we're on wave like 15, which is not going to be the case ever because we're only saving at 10, but say so that it, it was on, say, wave 15, then we'd get a decimal out of that. And uh, since we're casting this as an int, would get rid of all the decimals and we only get the one which is which is what we want alright so now having this we can go ahead and just reward our player with that oh by the way let's add the dot text I totally forgot about that here and then you could be adding to this text something like um, plus and then the amount in this case magic break reward at two string plus magic 
bricks. And I, if we only get one though, we can't really put the S here. All right, we'll just leave it here. <laughs> All right, so um, we've changed the text. Everything should be looking good. Now, of course, we're not rewarding the player just yet with that. But at least the text should be a little bit different when we boot the game and actually have a look at this. Oh, wrong one. So current wave, current starting wave is at 10, then recent wave progress as still the same number, and that's because we never really called our function. I totally forgot about that. We've made the function, we're never really, we're never really um, calling it. So I'll take this, move at the very top here under the start, and right here I'll do e update wave text. We'll also call update wave text when we do a on reset wave button down there. Now having this done, we can go back in the game. And current starting wave is at zero, and then reset wave progress gives you zero magic brick. You can still press on it, it's not going to do anything because we're still in the, on wave zero. But say we do clear the first level, I'll quickly pause the video until we reach that point. Alright, so here we are on wave um, 11 right now, of course we passed the wave 10, so let's exit that. Go back here, and as you can see, the current starting wave is now 10, and if we'd like to reset that, we get plus one magic brick. But we, we really don't, in fact, we need to put that in right now. So on the reset wave button, we'll also get the same number that we've got earlier by doing a, um, a simple int and we'll do magic brick count or magic brick reward is equal to starting level divided by 10. And then we can go ahead and say the tower. Well, actually, we do it before we save. That's really important. Um, the tower dot instance currency currency at the index um, currency dot magic brick is now plus equal magic brick reward and that should actually work perfectly fine I believe let's have a look at this in the game of course and uh, we're gonna go check out how many magic bricks we have we have 999k okay so if we get one more we should be at 1 million. And there we go, we have 1 million magic brick right now. So as you can tell, we were rewarded with the right amount. Well, we don't really know if it's the right amount, but of course, I mean, it, it can only be one at this point. So, um, yeah, this is working now. We have a reset button, and that's going to be pretty much it for this episode, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you enjoyed this, please leave it a like, really appreciate that. And the series going great thus far. Um, we're going to be taking a small break really soon so we can actually just, I can work on my art on my side. And, uh, but, but before we do that, we are going to publish a game and have a beta version going. So guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Also subscribe for more tutorials like these. Check out the Patreon page if you wish to support me with what I'm trying to do with the channel. And other than that, please, uh, so I already said that. Well, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.